This happened when I was a senior in high school. My parents went out of town and they decided I was old enough to stay home alone. I was forbidden to have any parties, but they said I could have friends over, but only ones they trusted. I wasn't really a partier anyway, but I did have my best friend stay with me on Saturday night. We hung out on the deck and had a beer or two, tossing the cans into the wooded ravine behind the house to hide the evidence. Then we went inside to watch scary movies. Just over a mile from my house is a hospital. From time to time, the local police have to bring criminals into the ER for treatment. Just as we were going to bed, a convict assaulted a police officer and escaped. And his escape path took him on a path directly toward my house. We always locked up when we went to bed at night, but my friend didn't know how to lock our patio door when we came in from the deck, and I didn't notice that she hadn't done it. My friend's a very heavy sleeper, but I'm a light one. Just an hour after we went to bed, I thought I heard a sound downstairs, like the patio door opening. I wasn't sure because I was half asleep. We have cats, so one of them could have bumped into something. Anyway, I got up to investigate. The house seemed quiet when I stepped into the hall. When I went to the top of the stairs, I thought I heard something downstairs. Again, it could have been a cat. Then I heard what sounded like footsteps, and they were coming down the hallway toward the stairs. A moment later, a dark figure of a man appeared at the bottom of the stairs, and I ran toward my room. When I got there, I remembered I'd left my cell phone downstairs charging. I woke my friend up, and she almost screamed when I told her that there was a man downstairs. That's when I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I yanked my friend out of bed, and we ran down the hall to my parents' room, where there was a landline. The door didn't have a lock, so I put my back against it as my friend called the police. I heard the man's footsteps as he came to the door. He didn't say anything or even try to open the door, but I heard him breathing out there. It took an attorney for my friend to get through to 911, but once she did, the police responded quickly because they already had a lot of cars in the area searching for the escaped prisoner. I heard a siren in the distance and the man moved away from the door and down the steps. A few moments later, I heard the front door open and slam shut. The police made it there in a minute and knocked on the door, and then they came inside. I ran down the hall and shouted down to the police officer standing in the front hallway, telling them that the man had just left. One cop stayed with us, and the other ones raced around the neighborhood in pursuit of the man. I learned the next day that they caught the escapee on the other side of the neighborhood just as he was trying to break into another house. I truly feel we dodged a bullet that night. And I told my friend to always lock the doors when she came over to my house. The final storm of winter swept in, surprising everyone in the area. The snow started that night, and while it wasn't a heavy snow, it did snow off and on throughout the night. I'm a very early morning riser, and in an effort to stay fit, I do morning walks. In the winter, that sometimes means getting up before the sunrise, and that puts me out walking in the dark or the near dark a lot. Still, I always found the winter air invigorating as I walked. That was until one specific morning. My routine varies. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks or podcasts as I walk. But at other times, I just drink in the quiet of the early morning before the neighborhood is filled with commuters or other early morning walkers. I was 10 minutes into my walk when I thought I heard footsteps behind me. At first, I ignored it, figuring it was just another person out to get some exercise. But the sound persisted. Eventually, I turned around, but when I did, I didn't see anything. The sidewalk was empty. Still, I had this nagging sense that there was someone following me. Whatever it was, 
it caused goosebumps to pop out all over my body. But it could have been the cold, too. I was on the far side of the neighborhood by then, so I had a long walk to get back to my home. I was barely five minutes into my return trip when I heard the footsteps again. I looked behind me, but like before, no one was there. But I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was following me. So I stopped and I looked between the houses where I stood. That's when I saw something moving in the shadows behind the houses. That's also when I remembered a story on our neighborhood Facebook group about someone being attacked. That person reported that someone hit them from behind and nearly knocked them unconscious. That's when a whole new tinge of fear washed through my body. Someone was out there, and I was far from home. I had my cell phone with me, but the police in my town weren't the fastest to respond. As far as I was concerned, that left me on my own. So I walked, but I walked faster. But as fast as I walked, there was no getting away from the sound of footsteps from behind the houses. Every time I looked between the houses, I saw a shadowy dark figure moving between the houses. It wasn't a distinct figure, and I couldn't even tell if it was a woman or a man, but it didn't matter. I was sure it was following me. Then again, it could have been a neighbor out in their yard, feeding the birds, checking the gutters, or just enjoying the brisk morning air. Maybe, but all those ideas felt like a reach. I didn't know why I didn't run, Maybe it was that ingrained feeling that I didn't want to be intimidated. I know, it's stupid, but I walked even faster. Still, I had a few blocks to go, moving along the sidewalk. Every time I glanced out of the corner of my eye, I caught movement. I decided to change my approach and got off the sidewalk and cut through one of my neighbor's yards. Of course, I could have ran into a vicious dog, but I lucked out and made it through the yard and back out onto the street a block away. When I got home, My wife could see something in my face. When she asked what was up, I told her I thought I was being followed. She told me I always had an overactive imagination. But my curiosity got the best of me, and I went back out into the front of our house to check to see if there was anyone out there. The street was clear, but when I turned around, I saw something that chilled my blood In our lawn was a set of footsteps leading to our front door, and I knew they were not mine because I walked up the driveway. Later that week, I read another report of an assault in our neighborhood. The police came out in force, and nothing happened for a couple months, but I stopped taking my morning walk for a while after that. You should always feel safest in your own home. I know I always did. Least I did until some strange occurrences started going on in our house. we just moved into our new home four months earlier and my wife was a nester. She made the place homey in very quick time. Like many people, we spent our nights watching TV and movies. Of course, the sounds of the TV filled our family room. But one night when I was alone, I decided to do some reading after everyone had gone to bed. The house was quiet, dead quiet. Just after a few minutes into my reading session, I heard a noise. It was a soft scuttling sound. Of course, I stopped reading to listen, and I listened really intently. My first thought was bad enough. I thought we had rats, or possibly worse. I'd lived in a house before and we discovered that a raccoon family had taken up residence in our basement ceiling. It took some extraordinary measures to get them out of the house. Still, I had to know for sure, no matter how unsettling it could be. Little did I know that it would prove to be worse than any rodent invasion. So into the basement I went. Our basement, like many people's basements, is the place where we keep all the detritus of our life. In other words, all the stuff we don't want other people to know we have, the junk of our life. 
Once I got downstairs, I stopped to listen again. The basement was totally quiet, but it was in that silence that I heard something, a very slight noise. Although this time it sounded more substantial, certainly bigger than a rat or a squirrel. As I stood there, I reflected on some incidents that had happened lately in our house. Little things being knocked over in the basement, things missing in the pantry area we kept down in the basement. Back when the raccoon got into our house, we noticed things missing. Cereal boxes were open and some pieces of cereal were on the floor. I dreaded finding another raccoon. In the back of our basement is where our laundry is. Just past the washer and dryer was a crawl space. We kept a few storage tubs in there, but not much else. I made my way to the laundry area, being as quiet as I could. Once I made it just outside the other side of the dryer, I heard the noise again. There was no doubt it was coming from the crawl space. To cut down on drafts, we placed a piece of plywood across the opening of the crawl space. This meant to find out what was making the noise, I had to slide the plywood out of the way. I was getting more than nervous just considering moving that board. I was convinced that as soon as I moved it away, a rabid raccoon would jump out and take a chunk of flesh out of me. So I decided to slide the board out of the way as fast as I could. I reached out, grabbed the board, slid it out of the way, and then jumped back to avoid any surprises. No critters came out at me. What I saw was the darkness of a mostly empty space. I let my eyes adjust to the darkness as I scanned the interior. Once I worked my view into the back corner, I got the shock of my life. A pair of eyes stared back at me. But these weren't animal eyes. They were human eyes. I'm not too proud to say I might have let out a little scream. I did take a couple steps away from the opening. I had no idea what to do. Could I make it upstairs in time to call the police before whoever was in the crawl space came after me? I looked around for anything to defend myself, but the best I could do was a screwdriver. As it turned out, I didn't need a weapon or even to run. The person who was in our crossbait stayed inside it, at least until the police took them out of the house. As it turned out, the person was homeless and they knew a trick to get into our house. There was a window at ground level and the latch was broken, allowing for easy access. The homeless man had slipped in at night and hid in our crawl space. This time, he just made too much noise. That night, I fixed the latch and locked the window up tight, making sure no one would ever get in our house again.